Okay, so the first biasing technique or biasing circuit that we're going to learn about, we're going to call it simple biasing. And the circuit looks like something like this. Remember that for all the circuits that we're going to discuss today, we're just going to discuss a circuit that sets the IC and VPE or VCE of my transistor. So like basically the operating point of my Sorry, this should be VPE. The operating point of my transistor, right? So basically, we're going to learn about um, how the circuit operates and then how to determine like the IC, the, the current of the, co the collector current of my transistor based on that, based on the circuit, and then how to tweak this collector current. So if I want to get a 1 milliamp current versus a 2 milliamp current, what parameters should I change and how do I change them to get the current that I want, right? Because at the end of the day, remember, uh, the gain of my transistor or the gain of my amplifier dependent, uh, was dependent on GM, and GM was IC divided by VT. So if I find a way to actually set the IC, the DC current of my collector, then I have a way to actually somehow uh, directly control the gain of my amplifier, okay? Later, after discussing all these biasing circuits, I'm going to teach you how to actually connect the signal source, that microphone, to this circuit, because I'm not showing the microphone here, uh, but I'm going to talk about it later, and you're going to see that it's it's done very easily. It's it, it's not there, There's no complication in doing that, right? Uh, with, a, with a quick trick, you can actually connect the microphone without actually affecting anything related to the biasing, okay? So now, for now, we're just going to learn about circuits that set the IC and VBE and VCE and like basically the DC operating point of my transistor. Okay, so how does this circuit works? Uh, well, I know that if I write KVL from VCC all the way to ground, I'm going to have VCC minus RB times IB minus VBE equal to zero, right? Therefore, I can say that IB is going to be VCC minus VPE divided by RB. And knowing that IC is equal to beta IB, I can say that IC is equal to beta times VCC minus VPE divided by RB. Okay, now out of the parameters in this equation, I know that beta is always given. I know that RB is a resistor value, so I can it's already either given or I can actually set it if I want to set the IC, but let's say it's given. And then VCC is also given, right? So I have IC and VBE. The nice thing about these two parameters is that they also are related using IC is equal to IS exponential of VBE over VT. So with this system of two equations, two unknowns, the two unknowns being IC and VBE, I can actually find both of them. Okay, so that's how I actually set the IC and VBE. So I can actually uh, find IC and VBE using this, the, this, the, the, the system of two equations, two unknowns. And then I can work my way back. I can say that if the question was telling me what should like design the circuit uh, or design the value of the resistors in the circuit to have a certain value of IC, let's say the question was telling me to uh, design the circuit to have an IC equal to five milliamps, right? Then I knew that IC is equal to five milliamps. Then the value that I didn't know was RB, right? Because that's the only uh, parameter that I can change because VCC is the supply voltage. It's connected to many other places. I don't want to change that because it, it probably will affect everything on my chip. Remember, this VCC is the, is the battery voltage that is kind of common between all transistors in my circuit. So if it's 5 volts, it's 5 volts. I don't want to touch that because I might actually touch it and uh, get the current that I want from for this transistor or for this amplifier, but then I probably ruin everything else on my chip. So I don't want to change VCC. Uh, and then looking at this, VBE is unknown. Beta is kind of in, uh, basically, uh, 
an intrinsic parameter into uh, of my transistor so i cannot really change that unless i go back and rebuild my transistor that's something i don't want to do as a circuit designer um, and ic is given so looking at vt is the thermal voltage is again is an intrinsic parameter of my transistor so there's nothing i can change other than rb so basically looking at this circuit i can see that by changing the base resistor the resistor that is connected to the base to be more accurately defining it uh, i can easily set the or i can get easily get the ic that i want or i've been asked to design to okay so um there are a couple of points that we have to uh, note here number one is rc has nothing to do with the biasing of this transistor and that's something that we did expect right why because well if you think about it this transistor is supposed to be a voltage controlled current source so at the collector side so this this entire circuit is really something like this and this ic is equal to something something exponential of something something right so it's a voltage controlled current source so whatever i connect to here the rc is not going to affect so basically i'm talking about this entire circuit here being the current source right so if i change rc it's not supposed to change the current and it does not i can actually see from my equations that it does not okay so that's number one so rb is the only thing that that matters in terms of biasing um, rc of course matters for other things that we're going to see it actually is very important to set the gain of the amplifier as we will see later in the future weeks uh the other point is if you have ever tried to actually solve a system of two equations two unknowns that involves an exponential equation you will realize that it's almost impossible to do that by hand analysis you have to resort to matlab or some other numerical calculator so this is not really something that we like to be dealing with right the way that we actually deal with this these kind of equations is that we really need to do some sort of a numerical analysis but then we're going to do it in a in a smart way so that we don't have to do a lot of calculations we're just going to go with a reasonable value for vbe and then calculate the ic and then from there i can actually go back and correct my vbe and hopefully i don't have to do uh, more than uh well one or more than two iterations probably maximum is going to be three okay the last point but definitely not the least important one is the fact that the circuit is actually quite sensitive to beta meaning that if you look at the value that we got for ic this is the same expression that we found right so if you look at it you will see that if beta changes by i don't know 10 percent my collector current also changes by 10 percent and the thing about beta is that I don't know if you remember from the physics of semiconductors when I talked about BJT transistors, uh, it beta is a parameter that could change by a lot, and it's a very it's a very weakly controlled parameter. It's it's set by the doping level of the emitter and the base, and those things we can we can set them to a, uh, with, with a certain level of precision, and beyond that precision we really don't have any control on it meaning that uh, you might design this transistor to have a beta of 100, but it, it easily can have a beta of 70, 80, or 150. So like you have the same fabrication house, same process, same run, and you might actually get different kind of beta, okay? So, and that's, that's really the reason that uh, we always say that um, it, assume beta is large. We never say, oh, beta is gonna be always this number, and we're gonna make sure that the all beta is always 100 or 110 or something like that right if you remember from the early on when i introduced transistors i mentioned that beta could be somewhere between 50 to 200 right so now knowing that then this circuit is not going to be really useful right because imagine that i design this circuit assuming that beta is i don't know 100 right and then everything went well. I simulated the circuit in, in LT Spice or P Spice or H Spice or like whatever circuit simulator that I have. 
and then I send it for fabrication. I do the layout and send it for fabrication. The chip comes back and I realize the beta of that transistor is not really 100, it's actually 130. So now instead of having a 5 milliamp, I have a 30% increase that in that high uh, uh, in that 5 milliamp. So I'm going to have 5 times 1.3, right? So that's that's the problem. So I'm going to have uh, 5 plus uh, 5 times 0.3 is 1.5, so 6.5 milliamps. That's a huge increase. That's a 30% increase uh, in in the value of my current, and it could actually kill uh, the performance. It could kill the power consumption. It could actually drive my transistor to, to saturation. Imagine that I set RC to make sure that I'm at the edge of saturation. Now current is actually increased by 30%. So the voltage across this resistor is increased by a factor of 30%. Therefore, I might actually go to saturation. Everything could be uh, just going south, right? So how do I actually fix the problem? Well, I have to actually design uh, or I have to actually come up with better biasing techniques. Uh, this simple biasing is actually good for educational purposes, but it, it is rarely used be, uh, in, in, in practice simply because it is very sensitive to beta variations.